Okay, I have one o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. I would like to welcome all of you today uh, to today's special meeting. I would also like to thank you for your preparation for today's meeting and the anticipated discussion, deliberation, and determinations. Thank you to those who communicated to the board members, either directly by email or phone or by exercising your voice through a digital public platform. Also, thank you to our school leaders from across Kansas. We appreciate your serve, service and leadership this school year. Uh, today, our special meeting is to receive the recommendation from the Board of Appeals as they have indicated it appropriate to reconsider the restricted attendance policy implemented in the November 24th Board of Directors meeting. This meeting will allow for final action regarding restricted attendance at winter interscholastic activities. At this time, I will ask Mr. Faflick to conduct a roll call and to provide an operational overview of the meeting for today. Mr. Faflick. Thank you, President Stein, and thank you, members of the board. We appreciate you uh, coming to uh, this meeting in a virtual uh, format. And again, uh, we appreciate your service and look forward to the discussion, and deliberation, and determination as President Stein referenced. Uh, we'll begin with our roll call on this opportunity. We'll provide a mic check as well to make sure that uh, everyone can hear uh, comments that you make. So a simple here or present uh, will suffice. And we'll begin <coughs> with our State Board of Education representatives, Dina Horst from Salina. Present. Jim McNeese from Wichita. Present. Thank you. Our con governor appointees um, from Congressional District 1, Salina, Reverend Delvin Strecker. Present. Thank you, Dr. Linda Wiley of Silver Lake. Present. Uh, Catherine Smith from Olathe. Present. And David Abel from Wichita. Present. Thank you. Now we'll go to our Board of Education uh, representatives from congressional districts uh, representing large schools and small schools from our Division One and Division Two platform. Uh, from Bueller, Matt McCabe. Present. From Smith Center, Bob Dietz. Present. From Topeka Seaman School District, Keith Griffin. Present. From Parsons, Mike Castle. Present. From the Blue Valley School District, Stacy Oberner Varhal. Present. From Lewisburg, Jerry Flanagan. Present. From Goddard, Mark Richards. Mr. Richards, I believe we have you on, but I'm not seeing you or hearing you. I see you, Mr. Richards. I see a thumbs up. Okay, would you please send a chat to say that you are present, Mr. Richards, just to make sure that feature is working, though we don't have the volume yet. We'll get that figured out. Uh, from Ren Renwick School District, Craig Nelson. Present. Craig. Now our organizational representatives, the advisory groups of the Kansas State High School Activities Association from the KASBC, Ryan Burroughs, Satanta. Present. From the KCA, Stan Boggs of Dodge City. Present. From the KIAA, Douglas uh, Jason Menard. Present. From the KMEA out of Columbus, Gay Phillips. Present. From the KSCA, Tonganoxy, Steve Harrell. Present. Thank you. Now we'll go to our middle school, junior high representatives, uh, president and principal of Hill City High School, uh, middle school, junior high, Alan Stein. Present. Thank you, Alan. Principal Sabetha, Matt Garber. Present. From Olathe, Frontier Trail, Rod Smith. Present. From May South, Court Haynes. Present. From Dodge City Comanche, Justin Briggs. Present. And from McPherson Middle School, Brandon Similink. Present. Thank you, Brandon. Okay, we've got everybody uh, accounted for there. Now we'll go to our league representatives elected by the league to represent the leagues. Please note that while I may identify these 
representatives by school name. That's only for your purposes. They are actually voting to reflect the wishes of their league as they mo move through the meeting this afternoon. Uh, from Rose Hill, from the Ark Valley Chisholm Trail League, Shannon Haydock. Present. From uh, Andover Central, Assistant Principal Amanda Greer. Present. Athletic Director from Salina South, Ken Stonebreaker. Present. Athletic Director from Mueller, Justin Sizer. Present. Representing the Big Seven League, Principal Holt and Rod Whitmer. Mr. Whitmer, we're not seeing you pop up. Present. Uh, there's Rod. Thank you, Rod. Uh, Principal Topeka High School from the Centennial League, Rebecca Morrissey. Present. Excuse me one moment. I can't hear Jeremy. Jeremy's going to take one of my phone calls so we can continue on. Uh, Penny Lane, Athletic Director at Topeka Washburn Rural from the Centennial League. Present. Athletic Director Emporia, Centennial League, Curtis Simons. Present. From the Central Kansas League, Dustin Wilson, Principal Larned. Present. From the Central Prairie League, Principal of Cheney, Greg Rosenhagen. Present. From the Central Prairie League, the Principal of Victoria, Dylan Dronberger. Present. From the CNC, Principal of Galena, Toby Van Cleve. Present. From the Eastern Kansas League, the principal of Overland Park, Blue Valley West, uh, Brent Potts. Present. And the uh, from the EKL also, the principal of Blue Valley Northwest, Amy Presley. Present. Principal of the Flint Hills League, or principal of Council Grove from the Flint Hills League, Kelly McDiffitt. Present. From the Frontier League, Principal of Paola High School, Jeff Hines. Present. Principal of Ottawa from the Frontier League, Kelly Whitaker. Present. From the Greater, uh, from the Great West Activities Conference, Principal of Goodland, David Blocklinger. Present. David from the Greater Wichita Athletic League, Principal of Wichita South, Kara Leedy. Present. Principal of Wichita Northwest, Eric Hofer Holdeman. Present. And from the GWAL, the principal of Wichita High School, E. Sarah Richardson. Present. From the Heart of America League, the principal of Whitewater Remington, Tim Bumgarner. Present. Tim. Principal of Kiowa South Farber, uh, Heart of the Plains League, Brent Schaefer. Present. Principal of Sublette from the High Plains League, Monty Marlin. Present. The District Athletic Director for USD 500, Kansas City, Kansas Public Schools, uh, from the Kansas City Atchison League, uh, Tammy Romstadt. Present. Also from the KCA League, uh, Principal of Wyandotte, Mary Stewart. Present. From the Lyon County League, Principal of Burlingame, Tammy Baird. Present. Principal of the Mid-Continent League, uh, our Principal of Smith Center from the Mid-Continent League, Greg Kelsch. Present. Principal of Alma Wabunsi from the Mideast League, Jan Hutley. Present. Principal of Beloit from the North Central Activities Association, Casey Seifert. Present. Principal of Marysville from the North Central Kansas League, Darren Schroeder. Present. Darren. Principal of Oskaloosa from the Northeast Kansas League, Brad Jones. Present. Uh, superintendent of Milkdale Southern Cloud USD 334, a Northern Plains League representative, Roger Perkins. President. From the Northwest Kansas League, the principal of St. Francis, David Morrow. Present. From the Pioneer League, the principal of Burlington High School, Stacy Reed. Present. Thank you. Uh, principal of uh, the superintendent of Moscow from the Santa Fe Trail League, Stuart Moore. Present. Principal of Caldwell from the South Central Border League, Aaron Root. Present. Principal of Ultimate Lebec County, Southeast Kansas League, Shane Holtzman. Present. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, Travis Powell, Principal of Greenberg, Kiowa County, representing the Spa Iroquois Activities Association. Present. Jason Herman, Principal of Olathe North, representing the Sunflower League. Present. Also from the Sunflower League, the Principal of Lawrence Free State, Myron Graber. Present. Representing the Sunflower League, the Assistant Superintendent of Shawnee Mission Public Schools, Michelle Hubbard. Present. And from the Sunflower League, the Activities Athletic Director of Shawnee Mill Valley, uh, Gerald Van Reen. Present. Principal of Oswego, representing the Three Rivers League, Rob Schneeberger. Present. Principal of Eureka High School from the Tri-Valley League, Sean Spoots. Present. Principal from Frankfurt, Frankfurt, representing the Twin Valley League, Dean Dollinghouse. Present. Principal of Leavenworth, representing the United Kansas Conference, Christina Jones. Present. Also from the UKC, the Athletic Director of uh, Kansas City Turner High School, Ben Sutherland. Present. From the WAC, Western Athletic Conference, the Principal of Hayes High School, Martin Straw. Present. Also from the WAC, the Athletic Director of Garden City, Drew Tan. Present. From the Western Kansas Liberty League, the Principal of Grainfield Wheatland, Grinnell, Todd Flynn. Present. From the Wheat State League, the Principal of White City, Joel Kant. Present. And representing the independent schools, those schools that are not currently part of a league, the Principal of Olathe Heritage Christian, David Schenck. Present. Thank you. By my record, we have all 78 in attendance. So we'll have a majority of 40 and three quarters vote if necessary would be 59. So uh, thank you for letting us do the mic check and proceeding through attendance in that manner. A couple other of announcements or just an overview operationally of how the meeting will go today. You have all received the meeting agenda. Uh, you'll take action on a waiver of the 10 day written notice here momentarily. Uh, you have minutes from, uh, in that support material, minutes from the appeals hearing that included communications that were provided during the appeals hearing. Uh, you also have received uh, yesterday afternoon from me uh, and, and from my assistant, Mindy, uh, all of the public forum communications that were received and addressed as such. I know you also received many other communications. I think there were about 42 messages, about 47 pages in that public forum uh, that you did receive. Uh, in terms of uh, the meeting today, we really have one action item after we waive the 10 day notice. So we understand there may well be amendments. Any, mo any item must have a motion and a second prior to discussion. And then ultimately uh, there will be action on those items. A must um, any amendment must be made. It must be seconded. And we will try to prepare for you and keep a working draft as a shared screen to make sure everybody is uh, fully aware of the details of an amended motion as we move forward. Any such amendment is subject to the majority of the board uh, attending uh, to approve it prior to it becoming the acting motion as we move forward. Amendments must be germane to the topic on the agenda, uh, and that is to be determined by President Stein. If an amendment is not germane to the topic, it should not be and could and would not be appropriate for introduction here. It would need that three quarters vote as we referenced earlier. Um, again, as we move forward today, uh, it is important for you to remember that the debate is not in the chat room. The debate is for you to ask to be next to speak on a topic. Uh, the chat room is for you uh, to have um, a clarification made. If there is a vote, we will put that vote total in uh, the chat feature for your reference and for your notes. Uh, the voting protocol today will be roll call vote unless otherwise requested by President Stein. Uh, please note uh, the use of the poll if we use that feature is a permanent record. It is uh, may take a moment to set up and it is certainly subject to uh, the same Kansas open records request that it has always been. Uh, we typically have some requests for that voting record following any meetings of the Kansas State High School Activities Association. Again, I appreciate your preparation for the meeting today, and I now return uh, this to President Stein for him to conduct the business of the meeting at hand. Thank you, Mr. Faflick. 
Uh, first item that we have is to waive the 10 day notice of the meeting. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. <clears throat> Got a motion by Mr. Shank. Second by Mr. Perkins. Any discussion on the waiver of the 10 day notice? Hearing none, seeing none. Uh, President Stein, as that vote is being cast by our members, I would make note that we will also uh, have one member voting via text to Brent, just to make sure it comes through. We'll make sure that uh, we signify that vote by adding one to the appropriate column. That's Mr. Richards, whose technology is not behaving appropriately today. Uh, and then also anybody who abstains from a vote that will be counted as uh, a no vote for the purposes of counting votes today. We actually have that abstain. If we do, the polling feature will be one of the options that, that you move. So we'll uh, not count as, a, as a, an affirmative vote, just a, uh, a vote in opposition to the motion as it is presented. So we have 76 voting, 77 voting. Uh, on this, so we have. I had a bill. I had an. I had an air report cut. Bill, I had an air report come up on my screen. Okay. I didn't know if my vote got counted or not. Let's close this one, make sure we get it uh, right. We're going to try this one more time because we want to get to 78. Uh, including the one that will come to us via email. So I apologize, you're going to have to revote, but let's revote. We're going to relaunch that poll. It is now ready for you to do. Uh, so please cast your vote at this time a second time. Hopefully, President Stein won't get the air message this time. Okay, so now we do have 78 uh, voting, 78 in favor, and uh, one in, and zero in opposition. So the waiver of 10 day notice does pass through the request of the, uh, the meeting. Okay, as Bill stated earlier, uh, the public forum was via, via digital. Um, you should have gotten all that information from Mr. Faflick and hope you've had a chance to go through some of that. If not all of it, um, that, would be, that would be great. Moving on to item number five. We have item number five on the agenda, which comes back from the appeals board. Mr. Marlin. This will work better if I unmute, I'm afraid. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're, you're welcome, Mr. President. We received the following from the Board of Appeals following their December 4th meeting. Because masks are already required for attendance at Kansas State High School Activities Association events, and because the science tells us that proper mask wearing and social distancing effectively mitigate the risk of transmitting COVID-19, and because we believe that for several reasons, parents should attend their children's activities, we propose the Activities Association Board of Directors be reconvened for the purpose of reconsidering the decisions to prohibit spectators at high school and junior high slash middle school events through January 28, 2021, with a recommendation to allow for attendance of one or two parents slash guardians per athlete. Accordingly, for the purposes of starting discussion, I move that effective Thursday, December 10th through January 28th, 2021, interscholastic activities will allow for attendance of one or two parents slash guardians per athlete. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Marlin. Can I get a second? Second, second Myron Graber. Second by Mr. Graber. I would open the floor for discussion.
Mr. President, Craig Nelson, Renwick, uh, USC yes. 27 board member. Um, I think we should maybe consider uh, instead of one or two participants or um, spectators per participant and instead do per family. There are some families that probably have two kids playing basketball and maybe a cheerleader. Do they deserve six tickets, I guess, is where I'm going with that. Um, maybe we should just settle on one to two per family uh, per uh, location. If you, if you have an auxiliary gym or something, that'd be fine to, to send uh, additional representation over there. But uh, I, I think we maybe we should leave it per family just to, because we're going to have, if we open this up to cheerleaders and dance team, there's going to be quite a number of people in there. Thank you. Mr. President. Yes. Uh, Jeff Hines at Payola. Uh, a couple of thoughts come to mind. The way that the motion was put um, to us, it states one or two. So my interpretation would be that would be a local decision. And so as the host school, I would be able to decide whether it's going to be one or two and would notify the other school that I'm hosting. The other thing, it, it was um, short-sighted isn't the correct word, but it was an oversight. We shouldn't, um, I mean, the way it was put, we're basically saying we're going to allow somebody to come in for an athlete. And so in my interpretation, a cheerleader would be considered an athlete, uh, but we are not putting any consideration forth for an individual um, that would be playing in a pep band. And so essentially we are saying we are only, only allowing a spectator in because of the concern of someone being there, uh, in my opinion, if they were to be injured. Uh, I, I do wanna go ahead and go on the record of saying this. Um, first and foremost, and I know this is the case with the board members, but not necessarily with the general public. I respect the idea that each and every one of us has a vote to cast today. And in nearly every instance, we're representing a league or some type of a member association or group. And so we need to be respectful of how that vote is cast and know that it's not necessarily a, a personal opinion. Uh, I had an individual correspondence and I know someone's gonna be casting a, a, a ballot today and the split in their league was six to four, one way or the other. And so it's not necessarily unanimous what we're deciding um, a, as a league, but we do have to cast a, a vote that looks unanimous. And the other thing I'd like to say is all of these um, contacts we've been receiving, not all, many of the contacts we've been receiving from parents um, across the state have included uh, personal stories, concerns about injuries, et cetera. Some have, have, have gone a step farther than that and included some type of picture, whether it be in a direct communication or posted on social media showing that how these rec groups are able to be successful in terms of inviting parents and other individuals in. And I'll say this, by and large, the pictures that I've seen sent to me or shared with me have actually hurt the cause of letting spectators in, not helped. And the number of people that are not using proper mass decorum that are being used as evidence that we should indeed be letting spectators in, it's not good enough. And whether we're voting today to begin letting spectators in um, starting on Thursday of this week, December the 10th, or if we have to wait until January the 28th as our, our original motion was stated from our previous meeting, we as member schools are gonna have to go further than we've gone to any point in time, to make sure that these spectators are gonna do exactly what's said of them. So once again, to recap, I think there's an oversight here because it's only dealing with athletes and my interpretation would be that the host school is going to have to determine whether it's one or two based on their number. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Further Mr. discussion? Uh, Mr. President, Michelle Hubbard and Shawnee Mission. I just, I, I think this probably goes without being said, but I just, for the record, want to say it that many of us have facilities that we wouldn't be able to have uh, for sure two per athlete or per participant. So I think, I just want to note that it would be space provided. There would be times we might want to do that if we voted yes, but that the space would not allow for, for us to meet the mitigation measures. Mr. President? Yes, Mr. Straub. I'd, I'd encourage us to consider putting the word uh, at the maximum of two. That would allow Michelle and other areas that have smaller facilities to go down to one or none if they choose. Stacy yes, Reed. Yes, Dina. 
I got you next, Stacy. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, Dina. Um, the state board, as you know, the state board of education, as probably most of not all of you know, has uh, a gating um, criteria that it shared with school districts. And I know there's at least one district that follows it almost to the letter, if not to the letter. If you are in, as I remember, if you are in orange or red as a community, you are expected not to have spectators. So does this allow for districts or schools to say, we aren't allowing any spectators. And then, um, so we don't, so those administrators don't have to deal with angry parents. I just want to make certain that um, this isn't sending a message this motion is sending a message that it's not sending a message that schools have to allow either one or two parents. Mr. And they Fafflick. say no spectators. Mr. Fafflick, would you uh, would you like to address that, please, on the gate gating criteria? Activities Association is well aware of the gating criteria and know that many districts have indeed implemented that uh, with the fidelity and, as anticipated that the state board has, has put into place. Uh, this is a separate item than that. It can certainly be guidance that is provided. Uh, we see this as foundational and permissive. You can have up to, as it was suggested to, uh, if you insert this, amend this to be maximum. There is a recognition that some events uh, swimming pools potentially might be an area or some facilities might not allow for any spectators still uh, through this process. Uh, using local criteria is an option and certainly can be considered as well. Thank you. Uh, Stacy Reed. Uh, a couple comments real quick. Uh, one of them would be that in the uh, attendance piece, I would think that we would want to put no more than two parents or guardians per athlete. And I, uh, uh, along the same lines as Mr. Hines, uh, I, I do agree with him on the uh, pep bands or bands uh, where they would not necessarily be considered an athlete, but uh, possibly a able to put participant there or another acronym there that would fit that. Uh, those would be kind of the two areas that I I think we need to uh, uh, look at. Thank you. Mr. Rosenhagen? Well, really what Stacy said, that that is my hold up, I think, is the, uh, um, when it mentions just athlete, um, Jeff Hines uh, addressed it a little bit, but uh, depending upon interpretation, if I go to the Activities Association website and pull down the tab athletic and pull down the tab non-athletic, it's those things that were mentioned, you know, band, spirit activities are underneath that non-athletic, uh, you know, tab. So now, are they athletes? There's some pretty athletic cheerleaders that I've seen in all. So I too would venture towards wanting to include those. And I don't believe the verbiage from um, the appeals board does that when it states the word athlete. It leaves too much to interpret who is classified as that. Thank you. Uh, Catherine Smith. I have some questions regarding the, uh, do we have the most up-to-date data regarding post-Thanksgiving cases in Kansas? Has there been an increase statewide? And um, I watched the appeals board hearing on, or last week, and noticed that the, uh, those speaking at the public forum uh, 
I, I, I got a sense that we're missing the idea that this is a, a temporary ban and that in order to have a, a, a postseason, uh, one of the rationale behind uh, many voting was that this would ensure that those students would play a full season or we would hope. But I want to go to the medical science first and, and I don't know, do we have those numbers um, from the state looking at the post Thanksgiving numbers? Do they reflect what, uh, what's going on throughout the nation with records being set? Thank you, Catherine. Bill, would you like to address that uh, question that Catherine had? I believe that you see on your screen, and I'm having trouble seeing the whole thing, but I think you're about to see the whole screen. Uh, we have been tracking since uh, early spring or late spring, uh, the data that you see in terms of uh, what is happening. And you can see uh, the far right-hand column is that most current as of December 7th. Mm -hmm. I am talking to um, you know, the medical professionals, we somewhat hit a plateau, uh, though they anticipate that that COVID data will continue to come in. Uh, obviously, numbers continue to go up. The, the percentage in youth goes up uh, slightly, ever, ever so much creeping uh, forward. Certainly, the number of those testing goes up. Uh, the hospitalization rate has remained fairly steady. Uh, the um, but again, we're hospitalizing as a, at the rate of a steady rate. When it's a larger number of people being tested and diagnosed, that number will go up in terms of total hospitalizations, as you see in the line right above that. So uh, we see that beginning uh, to take an impact in that. The 14-day rule has gone down slightly. If you were showing the weeks immediately prior to that, you'd see significant increases in the 14-day and the, uh, the seven-day rolling averages that uh, that are often used to kind of give a sense of where are we in the most recently completed period of time. So, uh, Catherine, you see that, and board members, you see that mm -hmm. that current data up through uh, state reporting through this past uh, through December 9th is the last day on that call. Mm -hmm. December 7th, excuse me, December 7th, the final day on that call. Mm -hmm. Life would be hard to do that tomorrow. So through yesterday. Thank you, Bill. Mr. Whitmer. Yes, President Stein, thank you. Um, just like to mention that as a big seven league, uh, heading into our previous vote and now one into this one, uh, there's a you know, very diverse uh, thought process that goes into everything, just like what our, every one of our leagues um, have encountered, and that's why this decision is such a difficult decision. Um, I mentioned in the in the chat box there that I think that uh, the potential language ought to include as an allowance by the local board of education and county health departments. Um, I know that kind of covers some other things in previous as well, but just to put that in there, so that because uh, <clears throat> like in Jackson County here, you know we do have a mass gathering limitations of 25 but they also, our county has put in there when social distancing cannot be followed. Um, as many of us have done, I've gone through all of our uh, two gyms here at the high school, there are two gyms here anyway, and we certainly have, our JV gym is, is not a very large capacity. I mean, I would have to limit it to uh, zero to one uh, for parents in there because we've only got four rows on one side. Our varsity gym, we have quite a bit of flexibility, but that depends upon whether those other participants and, and, and you know, band and, and cheer and dance and everything. So there is no one size fits all, but also we need to make sure that we put the language into this motion that helps cover and uh, provides the flexibility that is necessary. So I would encourage that we include local board of education, county health departments allowances. And um, as a big seven league, uh, as mentioned before, uh, we can support one, the zero to one to two uh, spectators that uh, the appeals board has recommended to us. Thank you, President Stein. Mr. Whitmer, I had a clarification yes. question for you. In your in your language, there, you're saying you're saying up to two per athlete or per student participant. 
and then the allowance of the BOE and the county health to supersede that, or that's the max that would be, and then if you had mm. to go less, that's where they would come in. That's correct. Okay. The county health department, we, we can, the county health department, local board of education have the flexibility to be our guiding principles as, as limiting uh, even further if necessary. Okay, so that would that would be the part from zero to one if the two was That's the part. correct. Okay, thank you, sir, for the clarification. Uh, next, I had Tim Bumgarner. Yes, thank you, Alan. Uh, Tim Bumgarner, American League. Uh, as a league, we've discussed this. Um, we had, as a league, we're, we're in favor of it staying the way it is. Um, that was our overall league um, vote. Um, we had some concerns if there was a motion such as the one that's on the table there that the date is uh, essentially effective immediately. Uh, we have many of us would probably not be prepared for that um, as far as establishing gating criteria and having people in place. Um, my school, for example, we were uh, in person instruction this time last week with no positives and no quarantines. And, and today we are um, remote and we have a great deal number of our students, uh, including both our boys, girls, basketball teams, our wrestling teams are now in quarantine. We have multiple staff members that are in quarantine and, and multiple staff and students that have tested positive, many of whom are ill. Um, and then we had the luxury of contacting the school that we competed against on Thursday and Friday, the schools and letting them know. Uh, we were thankful that um, it didn't spread any further because we were the only people in the gym. Uh, as far as I know, and my, here's my question, have we received any further guidance uh, from the health advisory that says that we should consider this? Has, has we had any communication that said that that, that they would go back because the initial, from my understanding, is that we should not have fans fact initials, we should not be playing. Um, has that recommendation changed? Mr. Fadley? There has been no change in recommendation from our Sports Medicine Advisory Committee nor the, the KDHE that's been shared with us. Next, I have Toby, Toby Van Cleves. Thank you, Mr. President. Toby Van Cleef from the CNC. And just, just my reading of this um, recommendation from the appeals board, it's pretty limiting with, um, as it says, two parents or guardians, which would imply that even if, if you're a family had multiple athletes, if you're not a parent or guardian, then you're still not getting into the game. So I'm not sure there's an advantage for folks who have multiple kids competing on a certain night. Thank you. Darren Schroeder. Um, in regards to the North Central Kansas League, um, we had three questions we wanted some clarification to, or maybe for discussion items from others' input. Um, had anybody considered, um, since we did recommend and we did have athletes start in December, possibly moving up the date to allow uh, parents or guardians to start on January 12th instead of the 28th, therefore allowing 10 to 12 days after um, New Year's Day for uh, spreading and getting protocol. So then that would leave it up to the local um, agencies to be able to begin having fans. Therefore, our parents would have only missed the first part of December's games, which we allowed the players to play. The second thing we wanted to talk about, are we looking at two parents or guardians per family? Um, when you get into multiple students or athletes, you're, you could be adding a lot more fans or parents that are people that weren't parent or guardians. Um, you could be adding up to eight in our area for a student. So then one family might have eight people there and another family only having two parent guardians. And the last thing um, we wanna make sure we wanna have some type of recommendation or uh, wording looking at local decision-making after we start having hands concerning our local area and speed, our health department our officials talking. About. So we want to be able to have availability. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. Marty Straub. Marty, did you have something else to add? Sorry, guys. Um, no, not right now. Thank you. All right. Sorry about that. 
Uh, Casey Seifert, Seifert from Beloit. Casey. Here we go. We're okay. struggling here. Thanks, um, yeah, Darren kind of stole the what I was going to talk about with um, coming back early. And he said on on January 12th, and we talked about January 18th would be after a 14 day incubation period after that Saturday, which people are going to return to uh, school on that. And so we just talked about maybe adding up the date because the initial January 28th was based on no fans, like participating on the 15th and no fans. So we, we thought we could move that up a little bit. Thank you, sir. Mr. Greg Kelsch. Thank you, Alan. Uh, I'm rep representing the Mid-Continent League. And, uh, oh, thank you. On this decision, Later, good luck. Uh, locked at six and six. Uh, the one thing that our league did agree on was if it were to be moved, like Darren said, to the 12th and then uh, uh, graduate from there. Um, I do think the logistics of things, uh, once fans start coming in, um, if this does pass, you know, what, what's it going to look like? Are concession stands going to be allowed? Are the restrooms going to be open? Um, you know, obviously the masks. Uh, those are some things that, that I would be concerned with, um, making sure that people didn't intermingle from different communities. Thanks, sir. Rebecca Morsey. Thank you, President Stein. Centennial League had a discussion this morning and many of the things that Tim Bumgarner shared came up. We agree with that. I would tell you that we are also in favor of remaining where we are, but we had a discussion about the late January date being moved up. We also talked about going from New Year's Eve and New Year's Day and looking at 10 days out, which is the new CDC guideline for quarantine, revisiting, whether it's the board or someone out revisiting it at that point. I do believe that as a league, as we are discussing behind the scenes here, we would be able to visit this if it's allowed to be no more than two. Zero is, is a possibility as you work with local school boards and with uh, your county because we need to stay in compliance with that and then our league is able to do what we need to do. My only concern with that is we don't play just our league schools, even if our leagues are in agreement. And I've had a ton of emails talking about ensuring that we are consistent and discussing that even though, and I'm a proponent of local control, which is tough in this environment, but our local control hasn't worked well and Tim spoke to it very well. And I honor you, Mr. Bumgarner, for sharing what you shared. Um, I've had multiple letters from people talking about the amount of positive cases that are being hidden and not shared and people playing and things that are going on in this environment. And I think that's something we need to be conscious of. We're really in an environment right now where I, my heart goes out. I'm an athlete. I'm a coach. I have kids that have played. This breaks my heart on multiple levels. And as much as I want to think about each individual athlete, we are part of a greater good and we really have to look at what we're doing. And when I think about equity in our own district and in the inner city with, with low SES, and many of you have pockets of that already, uh, if we are doing anything that contributes to the uncontrolled spread and we continue to do that, the travesty is that in many places, our students are not in school and we're in remote. And that's not good for anybody, but it's certainly not good for students who are at risk already to be away from their schools longer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dave Morrow. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we've had very good luck, I think, with local control in the western part of the state. And uh, obviously, we're smaller, but uh, we, we certainly feel that we should have uh, more control over our current situation than, than what a broad mandate from the CASIA would, would give us that is kind of a one size fits all approach to the issue. And, and I, I am sensitive to the fact that in larger communities, there are larger problems with, with the virus. But 
one of the most compelling arguments that I, I have found in favor of allowing parents to attend uh, has to do with uh, liability and uh, you know, issues with injuries, um, underlying health issues like diabetes, um, asthma, allergies, things like that. So I think you know, that's, that's why we're gonna vote in favor of, uh, of allowing parents and, and also uh, of, of doing that as quickly as possible. Um, I, I don't want the liability of trying to determine if a kid needs to ride in an ambulance, uh, for instance, when that family might not have health insurance or something like that. So that's all. Thank you, Dave. Matt Garber. Uh, yeah, thanks, Mr. Stein. Uh, I wanted to share a few thoughts in regards to um, our locale uh, and what we're able to do with our activities. We've uh, we've had some success with our county health officials and what we've been able to do in schools. Um, I still have a little bit of a challenge with the association, what our legal aspect is and right is to limit fans in our gymnasiums. But I wanted to speak specifically to the fact that if we choose to follow our current guidelines, we're being very inconsistent with the current health practices and guidelines in the state of Kansas. If you look at KU, K-State, other colleges and their attendance and what they're allowing to do with local health guidelines and their, uh, their medical staff, they've been able to do that and they're continuing to do that. As I look at the um, recommendation from our appeals board, uh, I think it allows flexibility. I think there's some words that need to be changed but uh, we keep adding things to take away the flexibility of the local schools that can act on things like if they can't have so many people in the gym, that's a decision we need to make. And I think we need to allow the flexibility, um, adding things and keep adding things to make it is going to be very difficult to manage that, I think. I'm, I'm supportive of um, middle schools and congressional district two of allowing fans up to two at the earliest point. Thank you. Uh, Dean Dollinghouse. Yes, I represent the Twin Valley League and we're very much in favor. We've met in the last few days talking about things of trying to get at least two parents in uh, per family. I like Mr. Hines um, and <laughs> likes to, is going to present and I think that would fit very well for us and we've had it, you know, with our junior high already that only two parents are going to come. We put it on, a, send a list, those two parents check in at uh, for away games, parents check in at the gates and it has worked very well for us. Um, who do I have next? Kelly Whitaker. Um, yes, Kelly Whitaker, I represent the Frontier League. I know I've, I've been hearing a lot of discussions about being consistent and when we've uh, talked as a league about this, I think it's difficult. Um, it's always difficult in education for us to be consistent from one place to another. And when you're looking at something like the entire state of Kansas, which are different size gymnasiums and other um, athletic facilities that we'll be using during this time, I think it's going to be difficult for us to come out with a statement that is going to allow it to be consistent no matter where we were. Um, and I know that the Frontier League does um, support Jeff um, if he makes that amendment to just let parents come into us and kind of give set some guidelines, but give some of that control back to the local um, entities. Thank you. Anybody else want to address the board? Mr. President. Mr. Hines. Jeff Hines of Paola. Um, just listening to everyone talk now, I think we're at a point where we uh, have identified three issues. Number one, what is the correct dates, meaning when should we reintroduce fans? Uh, in the current motion, it would um, be on December the 10th. So one thing is the date. The second thing is we're gonna need to determine what that number is, whether it remains zero or if it's gonna go to two or four or some other number. And then the, the third thing, which will, will come up as part of my amendment is identifying is it the, a spectator or a parent or guardian per participant? And so, um, I would like to focus on two of these issues now as part of an amendment. And so my amendment is as follows. I move, we, we amend by striking one or two parents slash guardians per athlete. 
and replacing it with up to two parents slash guardians per participant's family as allowed by local board of education or health department restrictions. And so that can be found in the comment section for our, or the chat section for our group and hopefully could be um, put onto that shared screen. Uh, but two things I'd share about that. One is this focuses on the number, which would be two. And the way I have proposed the amendment, it would be two per participating family. So if a family has a boys basketball player, a girls basketball player, and a student in the pep band, those three students are going to have two parents representing that family unit there, not a total of six. That is my amendment. Okay, so we have an amendment by Mr. Hines. Kelly Whitaker, Frontier Legal, second it. A second by Ms. Whitaker. And the amendment is to strike the one or two parent guardians per athlete and replace it with up to two parents or guardians per participant's family as allowed by local board of education or health department restrictions. I would open the floor for discussion on Mr. Hines's amendment. Alan signed Jason Herman, Olathe North Sunflower League. Yes, Jason. I think all I'm asking for is clarification because I, you know, I've heard us talk about spectator and then parent and guardian. So we're going to leave it up to the schools. If you want to call them ticket takers or gate uh, monitors that we're going to be very specific to parent and or guardian and, uh, and have them be responsible to determine that. Uh, so if mom and little brother come, you know, um, under, you know, that I just want us to kind of process that piece because I think that's going to put some of our people in a tough spot at the gate. Jeff, would you like to address that for clarification? I, I would, Jason, uh, Mr. Herman, that's an excellent point. We, we put our lowest paid employees in the most difficult situations as gate workers. So I had not considered that. But what I did consider is the reason we would be allowing uh, spectators as identified as a parent or guardian by myself in that amendment is the idea of helping absolve a little bit of the liability should somebody get hurt. And so if a byproduct of that is a gate worker's in a difficult situation, then unfortunately that is something that they would have to deal with. Uh, I know how we would deal with it in payola in terms of supporting them, but I understand it doesn't always look the same in terms of supporting your gate workers in various communities, so yeah. Uh, Mr. Stein? Yes, Mr. Garber. Yeah, this is Meg Garber. I just, I'll just kind of reiterate the fact I support too. I, I think you're making it very difficult just by changing all the wordings, parent, guardians, per athlete, family. Um, I certainly feel that our local people can control that exactly with what we need with our league. Uh, Mr. Schenk. So just as we get ready to go forward and, and consider maybe voting on this, just asking about procedure, if this with the number two, one or two fails, could it be revisited using a maximum of one? Just asking about procedure on that. What we would be doing, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, uh, what we're doing is we would vote on the amendment that has been presented by Mr. Hines and seconded. And the, the amendment as written as presented, and I think Bill has that pulled up on the screen. That would be the amendment that we are voting on currently and discussing currently. Um, if there were, you know, if this one fails, then it would be open because we, we have a, a, an original on the floor still. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Mr. Whitmer. Sorry, President Stein, I have nothing to add. Okay, thank you. I just saw something in the chat. Sorry about that. Okay, so we've had a motion and a second on the amendment proposed by Mr. Hines to strike and to add that you can see on your screen. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? Hearing none. We will take a vote on this. We will do a roll call vote. I will have Mr. Faflick do the roll call. 
And Mr. Stein, it does look like uh, Mr. Kelsch of Smith Center is wanting to chat. Mr. Kelsch, sorry, one thank of, you. One of the things that in the chat here, um, I'd be interested in seeing is a parent or adult guardian, if we're talking about uh, the liability part of things, um, whether that be an older sibling even that, that's an adult. Um, do we need to put that instead of a, you know, like a 10 year old brother or sister? Uh, well, the way the, the way the motion, the amendment motion was made by Mr. Hine, it says allow for attendance of up to two parents or guardians per participant's family as allowed by local board of education and health department restrictions. Okay, there was a, an added comment in the chat of the word legal guardian. But that was not in the original motion or the second of the amendment. Is there any further discussion on the amendment as presented by Mr. Hines? This is Rob Schneeberger with the Three Rivers League. Just a clarification on the word, um, use of the word uh, participant and what and who that would include. Uh, Mr. Faflick, would you be able to uh, address that, please? Somebody, somebody's unmuted and needs to mute. Like we got it. Thank you. Uh, so I think that what we have tried to do to define participant is to have any participant on the student level be the players in the game, the managers, those that have an official role uh, at the activity itself that maybe include cheerleaders and dance team, as well as pet band members. It may also include student journalists. Uh, videographers, et cetera, but it's designed to identify those students who have a role, a function in that contest itself, uh, and they would be the ones that would be considered participants. Rob, did that clear that up for you? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that we were moving from um, those that are actually playing uh, or cheering uh, being involved in the athletic part of the evening and moving towards wanting to include everybody who is there participating and that each of those would then get one or two parents to be admitted. So yes, that clarified it, thanks. But re remember how this, how this uh, amendment is written, it says family. So if, if there's four members of the same family, they're only getting the two tickets, not the eight. Understood, thanks. Okay. This is Jim McNeese, State Board. Yes, Jim. Uh, I just want to call your attention to the, the state and national health experts that are telling us that COVID-19 is going to uh, surge here in the next couple of weeks. We've had the Thanksgiving and now we're coming into the Christmas holidays. And by bringing more people together in more circumstances like this, we'll be contributing to that uh, increase in COVID cases, I believe. And we need to take into consideration that we're not through this. There's a virus, you know, that's there. Then there's a, there's a vaccine in the future. But right now, uh, we're at, the, at a very dangerous point, according to the uh, experts, in terms of uh, this whole pandemic. And uh, I just would like us to see that we stay at January 28th and see if we can't uh, be in the state playoffs at the end of the semester rather than or the end of the season, rather than canceling it later on. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rosenhagen, did you want to address the board? Put it in the chat. I think I have a two part question here and apologize for splitting hairs on some of this, but uh, my uh, chat comment was, 
if, if legal isn't part of the legal guardian piece, then a 21 year old sibling uh, could be a guardian, although not legal, and therefore be one of the two spectators or attendees uh, for a younger sibling. So I, I assume that would be the case. Um, second part is a little bit unrelated. Uh, are those active participants, including coaches? Bill, would you like to address that? Typically, we would include coaches and their families as the, the two there. It would not necessarily be the coach's family, but I would assume a parent or guardian, but uh, the, the spouse or significant other uh, limited to that one or two, I think, would typically be inclusive in uh, that, that role. Thank you. Matt McCabe. Yeah, I, I put it in the comments. Like I said, if, if our whole issue is trying to control numbers and we're going to max it out at two, then I don't know why we're arguing over parent, guardian, and put somebody in that position. If it's if we say it's a family member, that's all we need to say. It's not going to increase the numbers or decrease the numbers any. And we don't have to decide whether it's a guardian, brother, so, you know, siblings, grandparents. It's just two people. That's all I've got. Thank you. Eric, Eric Hoffer Holdeman. Yeah, Eric Hoffer Holdeman from the Greater Wichita uh, Athletic League. Uh, just a clarification, several people have thrown around the, the liability term. And my question to the group, those that have used the liability term is, is what is different between an athletic competition and a practice session or a day of school? Parents aren't typically at practice schedule, that's practice sessions. They're not typically at a day of school. How is the liability different at uh, a competition? Thank you. Would anybody that has made that reference uh, like to comment to that question? I, I sure would, Alan. Okay, Dave. Uh, a great difference is that in practice and in a day of school, those kids and those parents are in the same town. And so in St. Francis, that means if anybody's familiar with our town, you're usually within about 45 seconds of getting here if you get in your car and go where we participate, you know, two and a half hours away uh, from town, that, that would be a, a huge problem if somebody, and, and we had this one time when I was a junior high uh, boys coach in football, we had a kid with a, a terrible asthma issue and we, we really didn't know it. And kid had an attack and thankfully his parents were there and they it ended up saving him, but he had to go to Denver for, about two weeks. Thanks. Alan. Hey, Alan. Yes. Hey, David Blocklinger, uh, GWAC. Hey, uh, last night we had a junior high league in Ulysses, which is three hours from Goodland, and had a kid break an arm. Uh, so those parents had to drive three hours to, to uh, a kid a kid in the hospital. So that would be my uh, answer to that question. Thank you. Mr. Faflick, would you like to address this? There we go. Uh, yes, certainly would. Uh, certainly we would not try to put the schools in a position of uh, elevated, significantly elevated uh, risk or liability. Uh, the fact of the matter is there's always liability as part of school day, as part of practice. Uh, you know, we have asked for schools to play closer to home and certainly have that expectation, though it's not always possible in Western Kansas, and I understand that, but it's part of the reason you want to be home, closer to home. Uh, as recently as a conversation, uh, as this meeting began, our attorney has suggested that you know, there is liability, certainly, uh, but that always exists. Uh, there's liability for doing nothing uh, and continuing to have that balance of the impact of COVID-19 in our schools and our communities versus restricting attendance and and mitigating that spread by eliminating group gatherings. And you know, so it's that balance of between the, the risk and the liability of both exist. And uh, from the perspective of the association as this came forward, and I think as the board deliberated the first time, 
uh, the liability of, of weighing, uh, doing nothing, uh, and letting fans continue to attend was more significant uh, than taking the action of restricting fans. So uh, from, from perspective of the High School Activities Association and, and our legal counsel, uh, the, the liability did not seem to be exacerbated by, uh, not, by, by restricting attendance. This is not about just eliminating parents. This is about uh, restricting a crowd, uh, restricting attendance, uh, and allowing the games to continue. Thank you. Uh, any, any, anything further? Mr. Nelson, Craig Nelson. Yes. Just for clarification, um, it's written where you can have two uh, adults. So if you're a, if you're a single family, um, it's you and your young son, you cannot take you, you can't take your young son to watch your, your child play. I mean, are we saying that's two adults? Is that how the amendment reads? That's what I see is uh, as the amendment is written and it's on your screen, it, it says up to two parent guardians per participant family. I guess I kind of have a problem with that. If, if you're got one kid and you can't take him to watch brother's game and that's, then you don't have daycare or some place else to take him. I, I don't see a problem with just two family members, at least one of them being an adult, I guess. Okay. Thank you. Anything further on the amendment by Mr. Hines? Hearing none, we will take a vote. Mr. Fafnick, if you will lead that for the roll call vote on the amendment motion by Mr. Hines. Certainly, we have the screen that shows the amended motion, uh, the motion by Mr. Hines to, to read as, as on your screen. Uh, we will do a roll call vote by last name in alphabetical order. A yes or a no clearly spoken into the microphone uh, is required. We'll have staff tabulate for us as we move forward. So alphabetically, last name will be no descriptor. Just be prepared as that comes to you. Uh, so first up, Abel. Yes. Baird. Yes. Blocklinger. Yes. Boggs. No. Briggs. Yes. Bumgarner. No. Burroughs. No. Dollinghouse. Yes. Beats. No. Uh, yes. Flanagan. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Garber. Yes. We have a Garber. This is Garber. Graber will be following. Matt Garber. Yes. Can you hear me? I did not catch that. Yes. Thank you. Now, Myron Graber. No. Greer. Yes. Griffin. No. Harold. Yes. Haydock. No. Haynes. Yes. Herman. No. Hines. Yes. Hofer Holdeman. No. Holtzman. Yes. Horst. No. Hubbard. Yes. Utley. Yes. Jones. 
Yes. This is from the Northeast Kansas League. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Okay. And Jones uh, from the United Kansas Conference. No. Uh, Kant. No. Castle. Yes. Kelsch. I must abstain due to a locked vote with the league. So abstention will be a no uh, as we tally them at the end. Lane. Yes. Leedy. No. Marlin. Yes. McCabe. Yes. McNiffith. Yes. McNeese. No. Menard. Yes. Moore. Yes. Morrissey. Yes. Moro. Yes. Nelson. Yes, sir. Obringer Varhall. Yes. Perkins. Yes. Phillips. Yes. Potts. Yes. Powell. That's a no. Presley. Yes. Reed. Yes. Richards. Mark Richards is a yes via text message. Uh, we're not audio uh, equipped there. Uh, Richardson. No. Romstad. Abstain. Root. Yes. Rosenhagen. Yes. Shank. Yes. Schneeberger. No. Schroeder. No. Sizer. No. Seifert. No. Schaefer. Yes. Similink. Yes. Sit, uh, Simons. Yes. Uh, Smith, our middle school junior high representative. No. And Smith, our governor's appointee, Catherine. No. Spoots. Yes. Stein. Yes. Stewart. Epstein. Stonebreaker. No. Straub. Yes. Drecker. Yes. Dr. Sutherland. Yes. Colin. from you. I'm going to come back and catch Drew at the end. Van Cleve? No. Van Reen? Yes. Whitaker? Yes. Wiley? Yes. Wilson? Yes. And Whitmer? Yes. And from the Western, Ant Com Western Athletic Conference, Drew Ton. I'm not. I'm not popped up, Bill. 
got you now. So <clears throat> just tell us yes or no. Yes. Okay, so we have an affirmative yes. So I'll have staff give me the totals on that. And we'll confirm that before we announce those totals. So I know many of you are scoring at home. Here's we have 51 in favor, 27 uh, mm -hmm. no or abstains to give us the 78 total. So 51 to 24 to, with three abstentions. So 51 to 27, the amendment passes and becomes our new motion. Okay, so the amendment carries 51-27. Mr. Fat or Mr. Castle, you have a comment? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I, I have received several texts. This going on December 10 is awfully close, awfully quick to get started and be ready to, to let fans in. Maybe a, a date later on would be more effective to give our school time to prepare. And I don't have a date in mind. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Okay, so what we have is we have a, our new motion on the floor would be to allow effective Thursday, December 10th through January 28th, 2021, interscholastic activities will allow for attendance of up to two parents slash guardians per participants, family, as allowed by local board of education or health department restrictions. Tim Bumgardner. Yes, thank you, Mr. Stein. I would move that we change the strike the December 10th date to January, Tuesday, uh, January the 12th. Okay, so we have a motion to amend the date of December the 10th to December to what January the 12th? January the 12th, thank you. January 12th, okay. Is there a second? I second it, Jim McNeese from the State Board. Okay, we got a motion and a second to replace December 10th with January the 12th? Hey, I just say we-, we uh, I would open the floor for discussion. Our guardian would just be, they, we, we can make that, we can throw legal into it and just, we'll tell our kids this is who's coming to our game, you know? And maybe that's just something we go across the league and- Aaron, you're on. Right. Aaron, you might want to mute yourself. Aaron Ruth. Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Hines. Yeah, Jeff Hines at Payola. So um, when I presented the amendment to the group, um, I indicated that there were three things that we needed to settle on. One was the date, the second was the number, and the, and the third was coming up with um, on a perfect yeah, I, participant. Yes, we just we've dealt about with that. the number, and um, we've dealt with the family situation. So we're at a situation where we're basically figuring out, do we like the idea in general or do we care for the date? And so we're on an amendment for the date. I, I, I wanna make sure everyone understands that if you vote no at this point in time, you're voting no on the date and it would, it would stand pat with December the 10th. So in my case, I want fans. I'm going to vote no because I don't think we should be waiting until January to do that. And so when that fails, my hope is we'll be back onto that December 10th date. So I just wanna everyone understand where you'll be at by casting a yes or a no vote. Thank you. Mr. President. Yes. To, to follow up on Jeff's point, um, there could be an amendment to change, perhaps not December 10th, but it could, someone could come in with an amendment to change it to December 15th, perhaps next Tuesday instead. So I would be interested in making that amendment if this one fails. Okay, Mr. Mr. Bumgardner. I would like you to address the motion for amendment that you had stated the first time. 
Yes, uh, I moved that. We moved that date, the Thursday, December 10th. I would like that date to be, I, my motion was for that to be Tuesday, January 12th. Okay, so Mr. Bumgardner has motion to amend the date of December 10th and replace that with January the 12th. Everything else would stay the same. Correct. Okay. Mr. McCabe. When we vote on these dates, can we just use the poll feature in case it takes multiple votes to get the date dialed in so we're not doing a poll vote every time when we're just talking about dates? I am fine with that if it's a consensus of the board. We want to be as open as possible because, you know, we want everybody to understand that we we are here to what's in best interest of everyone and every student. So if, if we want to use the, the poll feature for the date part of it, then we can do that. And then we can go back to the original. Mr. President, I would say that we could do the poll for anything except for the final uh, agreement, the final motion at the end. I think all amendments can be done via poll, in my opinion. I'd okay. second that, Mr. President. I'd second that, Darren Schrader. Okay. So there's been a motion and a second to use the poll feature of Zoom for all the dates discussion. Brent, if you would populate that, it'll just make it easier because it's a quick vote. So it's not just dates, all amendments moving forward. Okay, for all amendments moving forward, sorry. Been a motion and a second. This is going to take just a moment for us to put that new item into the poll feature. Uh, we're going to uh, eliminate the one that you see on the screen now. I believe you're seeing a result now and we'll uh, do a new poll and that new poll will be uh, to have amendments be voted upon using the poll feature as opposed to using a roll call vote. That is correct. Uh, Mr. Stein, I would ask that we clarify, we do have this amendment to use the, the poll. I need to make sure I capture the proposer of this, uh, of this item and the second for that. Okay, uh, who was the, who made the motion to use the poll feature for all amendments? Ben Kansas City Turner. So Ben Sutherland is the motion maker for this, and the uh, and who seconded it? Darren Schrader. Darren, Darren Schrader. Schrader for Maryville. Okay, thank you. Okay, Tammy Baird. My comment is that this is huge. This is changing it to a month of no spectators. Well, I. The first, the first, the first vote that we're going to have is on the the motion to use the poll feature on Zoom. Yes, I get that, but I think we ought to do a roll call vote. I'm just making a comment. I think it should be okay. a roll call vote because this is what's coming next is huge. Jim McNeese and State Board. I don't have my Roberts Rules of Orders in front of me, but you already had an amendment on the table. And now you have a second one that came after it. I'm not sure that uh, you can vote on the one that you just got before you done, dealt with the one that was already on the floor. Okay, um, Mr. Fafflick, was there a second to Mr. Bumgarner's motion? Yes, there was. That was okay. Mr. McNeese seconded that motion. So it, we do need to take action on that. Okay. We have all the discussion we want on that item, then take action on that by your roll call vote mechanism and then deal with any other amendments uh, potentially through the, the roll call process okay. or the poll feature. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor by Mr. Bumgarner and we had a second to strike the December 10th date and add January 12th. Is there any further discussion on 
The motion and second of the date, January the 12th. Uh, Catherine Smith. I just had a point of clarification as it reads. Uh, it looks like for just two weeks, spectators are allowed. Um, if initially they were going to be allowed after January 28th, I'm, un I'm unclear about the way it's worded now. It doesn't make any sense to me for me to be able to vote one way or the other. Comment on that for the period of time January 29th and after, by action of the board at the November 24th meeting, the decision was to restrict attendance, and that would be restricted at the discretion of the local uh, mm -hmm. the local leaders and local school districts. So, uh, the period of time that is impacted by original action was December 28th through January 28th. Uh, this uh, still restricts it uh, now to a period of time where there would be no fans uh, voting for this, no fans up through January 11th and then January 12th through January 28th, there would be the motion that is there if it is supported uh, eventually by a vote. Uh, and then uh, the uh, period of time after January 29th would be local decisions. Thank you, Mr. Pathlick, that clarifies it for me. Mr. Van Cleve. Thank you, Mr. President. Toby Van Cleef from the CNC again. Um, just a comment that here in, in Southeast Kansas at the CNC, if, if our intention is to move, move the date to allow fans just to help facilitate the administrative process, we're, we're ready to move forward tonight with our junior high games if this, if this becomes the new normal allowing fans. Mr. Simulink. You know, as I look at the amendment that's on the table here, moving to January 12th, for those of us that have split seasons, that would uh, create an inequity in the number of games that our young ladies and their families would be able to uh, watch at this time, um, allowing more opportunities for boys and their families uh, after Christmas break. Um, Thank you, Brandon. Mr. Whitmer. I would just like to reiterate what Jeff Hines had said, stated earlier, um, <clears throat> and and that by changing the dates, you know, we're not accomplishing what his original amendment was, but we're also, by changing the dates, if we don't change the dates, you still have the option locally of saying zero or one. And so if we have the opportunities to utilize things within our leagues and within our local boards of education already set, um, I would encourage everyone to, to vote no on this. Any further comments? Mr. Wilson. Point of, uh, not only clarification, but I think one thing we're missing a little bit here is uh, visiting teams. We've got some schools in our league um, that have talked about if, if possibility of schools are even remote, might maybe not being able to play. Um, and so I think we just need to keep that in mind that yes, like if locally we wanted to have two, you know, zero to two, what would you do if you had a team that said we would prefer zero? Are we looking to, to cancel, move on? Would you accommodate? I mean, I just think that's something that needs to be um, thought about when looking at that. Thank you, Dustin. Anything further? Mr. Fafflick, if you do a roll call vote for the motion by Mr. Bumgarner. I shall do that and here we go. Uh, alphabetical order again, a yes or a no, please. You may unmute yourself prior to your name being called and then please remute yourself so that we have no uh, feedback uh, through a number of folks that are listening online as well as uh, directly interfacing with uh, the program here. Uh, so our first one up, Abel. Yes. Bayard. No. Blocklinger. No. Boggs. Yes. Briggs. No. Bumgarner. Yes. Burroughs. Yes. Dallinghouse. 
No. Dietz. Yes. Stromberger. No. Plan again. No. Plan. No. Uh, Matt Garber. No. Byron Graber. No. Greer. Yes. Griffin. Yes. Sorry, please repeat. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Steve Harrell. No. Haydock. Yes. Haynes. No. Herman. No. Hines. No. Over Holdeman. Yes. Holtzman. No. Horst. No. Hubbard. No. Utley. No. Brad Jones. No. Christina Jones. No. Kant. No. Castle. No. Kelsch. Yes. Lane. Yes. Leedy. Yes. Marlin. No. McCabe. No. McDippet. No. McNeese. Yes. Menard. No. Moore. No. Morrissey. Yes. Morrow. No. Nelson. No. Oberger Varhaw. No. Perkins. Yes. Phillips. No. Potts. No. Powell. Yes. Presley. No. Reed. No. Richards. No. Mark Richards is a no via text message. Richardson. Yes. Romstad. Yes. Roop. No. Rosenhagen. No. Shank. We went from no. the first thing. Weberger. Yes. said exactly what we weren't going Schroeder. Yes. Sizer. Yes. Cypher. Yes. Schaefer. Yes. Similink. No. Simon, uh, Simons. Yes. Rod Smith. No. Catherine Smith. No. Spoots. No. Stein. No. Stewart. Yes. Stonebreaker. Yes. No. Strecker. No. Sutherland. Yes. Don. No. Van Cleve. No. Van Reen. No. Whitaker. No. Wiley. No. Wilson? Yes. And Whitmer? No. Okay, we'll do a quick tally and provide those results for you to the motion that's been provided. Uh, we'll clear the screen so that you can see the motion that has been provided. In favor of that vote was 28 in opposition to that vote 50 still have all members
members in attendance and voting. So that motion failed. That amendment failed 28 to 50. Uh, so the motion by Mr. Baumgartner is not in effect. Okay, so it would go back to the original amendment of December the 10th through January the 28th. Now we've got a motion. If the motion is still on for using the poll feature for any, any further amendments, and there's been a second, is that still, is that still the case? Who was it that made the motion again, Mr. Fafleck? The motion for the poll feature uh, was Dr. Ben Sutherland, and the second was Mr. Schroeder. Mr. Sutherland, would you would would you like to continue with your motion? Okay, I do not hear him. Uh, I'd like it. you to respond to that verbally so that we can either move forward to another motion or take action on the motion on the table with the second. He said he said yes, his microphone will not turn on. So it's been it's been motioned by Mr. Sutherland, and I believe we had a second that holds. Yes. Okay to use the poll feature for any further amendments. If you will populate the vote at this time, or is there any discussion on the amendment to use the poll feature for further amendment actions before we get to the final vote? Hearing none, seeing none. Brent, thank you. Please cast your vote at this time. Five, four, three, two, one. Please close. We see the results on the screen of 65 to 11 in favor. So I'll look at uh, the text messages that may have been submitted uh, to determine uh, if we have Mr. Richards and the other uh, that we had uh, providing that um, was... Frank Schaefer. Okay, so we're 66 to 11. I think we had one failed to vote. So that becomes 66 to 12 uh, in, fa in favor of moving forward with amendments done by poll feature. Okay. Motion carried to use the poll feature for any further amendments. And then we would use a roll call vote for the final the final vote. Mr. Stein, are we are we making amendments at this point? Uh, we the floor is open. Okay, I would uh, I would uh, in regards to Jeff Hines, I think we've made a determination on the date. I think we've also made a determination on changing athlete to participant, but um, I think we need to separate the part that says family, and so. I would make a motion, an amendment that states, if I'm trying to read what's on there, the first part, effective Thursday, December 10th through January 28th, intercollect activities will allow for attendance of up to two, grab the wrong sheet, sorry. Excuse me, sorry about that. Up to two family members and strike parents, guardians per participant as allowed by local board of education or health department restrictions. And that also takes out family. So up to two family members per participant as allowed by local board of education or health department restrictions. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Garber. Mr. Garber has made a motion. I will let Bill or whoever's running the screen to get caught up on the amendment so we can all read uh, what, what it is that we, uh, for clarification. Okay, so Mr. Garber, uh, yeah. as it states here, it says effective Thursday, December 10th through January the 28th, 2021, interscholastic activities will allow for attendance of up to two family members per participant or participant's family. Uh, strikeout family, just per participant. Okay, so it'd be family members per participant, participants as allowed by local board of education or health department restrictions. Yeah, and that takes away that two for a family of four. That allows two per two people per participant, not athlete. Okay, so as and I just want to clarify that part. So if you're saying that you have you have two kids, then you would get four tickets. Yes. Okay. So we've got a motion by Mr. Garber as it's presented in front of you. Do we have a second? Sean Spoons would second. Second by Mr. Spoons. I would open the floor for discussion on the amendment motion by Mr. Garber. Clarification, Mr. President. Who, go ahead. Uh, so if there are three members in the band, that band family would also be allowed to bring in six people. Mr. Garber, would you like to speak to that? Yes, six would be the maximum, but as allowed by local board of education and health department restrictions, you may or may not have that many. Mr. Bumgarner. Okay, I'm just gonna state this. So to be clear here, so what we're doing is saying we're gonna allow fans now uh, starting December 10th. And not only that, we're gonna allow two for every participant that's there. So we went from not having any fans at all to now opening the gate for a, a number of people to attend. Uh, I think I think we're starting to stray quite a way away now from what the recommendations were given to us. Just wanted to state that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bumgarner. Mr. Yes. Nelson. I agree uh, with Mr. Bumgarner. I I don't think we need to open that can of worms. I, I liked it the way it was. Adding that word family in there, limited to two. Uh, it's going to get out of control if you. I mean, there could be families with eight tickets, and then they're. Um, you know, they're sharing tickets with other people and, you know, there's going to be people saying, well, that's not fair. They get eight. You know, my grandparents can't even come watch, but they're giving their grandparents and their aunt and uncle and everybody else tickets. So I liked it the way we had it before. Okay. Any further discussion on the motion by Mr. Garber? Um, yeah, I, I can understand the concern on that. The, the idea is that, uh, you know, the family can be limited and we might have a 10% limit on attendance and that doesn't work. So you have to, uh, you have to reduce it, but there is the option for local control on that, depending on who that proposal works for in our state. Mr. Briggs. I was just saying, I agree with Craig. I mean, I agree if we start, if, just because I have four kids don't mean I should get eight tickets because, again, that's taken away from other, other families that may only have the one kid. And if we're limiting our spectators to a certain number and those eight, eight people get there before the two and I have to shut those other two off because I've already hit, hit capacity, I don't think that's fair. So I, I'm, I agree with Craig going back to the original wording. Thank you, Justin. Mr. Straub. 
concur with Justin, Craig, and, and Tim. I think we're getting away from our numbers. Thank you. Thank you. Matt McCabe? Just in agreement with those other guys, I'd ask Matt Garber if he'd be willing to, to change that motion. I just don't want to put this out there and have it fail. Um, I understand the deal of local control, but like I said, we're, we're going from two to multiple. So I'd ask Matt to, Matt to change that motion. I'm not sure I understand what you're talking about changing it to. Just the two family members leave out the per, 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 per participant. So the max we're going to have is two. Mr. President, Jeff Hines, uh, Payola. I just want to remind everybody um, that when this motion passes or fails this amendment, we still got a main motion on the floor. So in my particular case, um, I, I'm worried that we're going to stray too far away by opening it up to participant. Matt, I understand what you're trying to accomplish. I support the concept, but the art of compromise is really important here. We have an opportunity before us to go no fans to offering some fans. And the original um, motion after this amendment fails would still give us that opportunity. So understand that a no vote is still going to uh, refer us back to that opportunity starting on December 10th to allow two per family. It'll be a little more restricted than some of us really want, but it's going to do the best that we can in getting some spectators there and still being um, somewhat guarded or cautious in protecting our communities against the spread of COVID. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Dustin Wilson. Um, kind of along those lines, we started this process of fans and, and the sentiment from a lot of the people that were that were contacting us um, with the, through the appeals process was, um, you know, reduce liability and have parents there in case of emergency. And I would just be curious as to how this amendment would would satisfy that, but also the, the mitigation, um, you know, limits were taken. Yep. Uh, Jeff, I, you know, you talked about you, you don't want to be having too many people, but I, I would say I had originally written the motion to say spectators, to allow up to two spectators per participant. So instead of allowing you to share tickets with anybody you might want to in your area, restricting that to family members only is somewhat of a compromise for what I originally intended. So I, I do I do take that well. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Garber and a second to replace the word parent guardians to family members per participants and strike the word family as allowed by local board of education or health department restrictions. Any further discussion? Mr. Schaefer, did you have something, you put something in the chat, do you wanna address that? I'm not sure how you get when a, a team's come from another place, how we're going to determine family or not family. I think that'd be a critical part of this. Thank you. I'm not sure my own ticket takers would know who the family members are at our school. So that puts us in an interesting position as well. Thank you. But I also think it's the same as parents. We don't know. I mean, how many, all of us in communities have uh, single parent families, and uh, you're going to have that situation. I mean, this is all going to be proactive work by all of our uh, athletic directors, athletic secretaries, those folks. Of it's almost it's almost like sending a football roster on Thursday to the Friday night school so they can get ready for a Friday night game. We're going to be asking the same thing of specific spectators. Um, and again, I know that we're trying to mitigate. I, I agree with family members. I, I don't agree with multiple tickets for if you have two kiddos on the basketball team or in the band, but uh, I absolutely agree with family members. Okay, motion's on the floor. It's been second, any further discussion? Mr. Fack, will you populate the vote, please? Uh, this, uh, well, the, the title says the current amended motion as proposed, you're actually in favor of the current amendment as proposed. The motion is still uh, a work in progress. This is only on the amendment uh, that is provided uh, by Mr. Garber.
please cast your vote. In five, four, three, two, one. Please close. And in favor, 66 opposed, one abstention, and one via text message, that is a no. So 10 to 68 is the final tally when we count the one abstention as a no vote. Okay, so the amendment, the amendment fails. So what we have is the original or the original uh, amendment proposed by Mr. Hines. Brent, will you scroll back up to that one or, or Bill, if you're running, I didn't write all that down. The uh, current amendment by Mr. Hines. Thank you. Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Briggs. I'd like to put an amendment in to change the December 10th date to December 15th. That way it gives everybody an opportunity to get things lined up and ready to go next week instead of just forcing something on right now. I second that amendment. Straub, whack. So you want you want your to go on Tuesday, December the 15th. Correct. Is there a reason not 14th on Monday? Because I know that question's coming, so I'm just throwing it okay. out there. No, we, we can go the 14th. That's fine, because there may be somebody who's going to have a, a Monday game, but most games are on Tuesday. But, yeah, Monday the 14th. I would still second that motion. Okay. So uh, the amendment by Mr. Briggs, second by Mr. Straub, is to put the effective date of December the 14th through January the 28th. Interscholastic activities will allow for attendance of up to two parent guardians per participant's family as allowed by local board of education or health department restrictions. Mr. Blocklinger. I'd just like to say, you know, pushing this out to the 14th, uh, I had a meeting last night for a game tonight. We're prepared for a game tonight if it was available. And I realized that, that it wouldn't even work with the 10th. But we've got our basketball tournament. We've got our uh, wrestling tournament uh, coming up. I, I just, it, it, it's something that I think we knew this might be coming. So we were prepared to have our basketball tournament uh, with at least one to two to two people and it, it, it maybe even more, but uh, um, I think you as a school, uh, if you're not prepared by the 10th or 11th or 12th, you sure have that choice to say, hey, we're not allowing fans yet, but I don't think you should make the ones that have tournaments uh, uh, Thursday, Friday and Saturday, not do it if we're gonna pass this, but that's just my opinion. Thank you, David. Craig Nelson. Those are my comments too. Same as David. I, there's some schools that are ready to go right now. If you're going to have 20 parents in the gym, it doesn't take that long to give out 20 wristbands. Um, if you don't want to, if you want to push it back to next week, then local administration and school boards can do that. But this at least gives the opportunity to those that want to, to jump right in to, to do that. Okay. Tammy Baird. Yes, I agree. We can get it done by the 10th. I don't see any problem with the tent. Okay, Mr. Morrow. Uh, ditto. I, we're we're ready, and like David said, we've we've kind of been planning for this possibility for quite a while, so um, we're ready to go. Okay. Any further discussion on the motion by Briggs? Well, let's let's save some time. With that being said, I'll change it to the eighth, and we can go tonight. I'll second that. Okay, so Mr. Briggs would like to amend his motion to read effective December the 8th through January the 28th. Interscholastic deputies will allow for attendance 
of up to two parents, guardians per participant, participants family as allowed by local board of education and health department restrictions. That cannot be seconded by Tammy. It must be seconded, be seconded by Marty. By Marty. Okay, Mr. Straub. I do not want to second that. Okay. So the motion stays as is. So we, yes. So the original motion by Mr. Briggs. Uh. For December 14th through January the 28th, it was seconded by Mr. Straub. Eric Hofer Holdeman, you have a comment? Uh, representing the Greater Wichita Athletic League again, I just want to say the exact opposite side. We are not ready. We are a large school district with lots of schools and lots of activities, and we're not just a single school. So we would respectfully ask the this particular amendment to stay as December 14th, which I think you just did. Yes. Any further discussion on the motion by Mr. Briggs? President Stein, I would reiterate what Eric said. We, there could be a tournament game tipping off in about an hour and a half. Um, I assume that if somebody caught wind and said, oh, I can make it to the game and go, uh, that school's not going to be prepared. And uh, I'm aware of a 415 game happening today that is part of a tournament. Thank you. Any further discussion? If you would please populate the boat. Five, four, three, two, one. Please close. In this one, we have 33 in favor, 39 opposed, four abstained. We have one via email that is in opposition, so it's 33 to 40 plus the four abstentions make it 33 to 44 uh, and uh, will, it is not supported. Motion fails. Okay. So the original motion is where we're at or the original amendment is where we're at. Are we ready to vote? We um, are. We are. I would entertain a motion if that's where we're ready for. Move. Item number five with the amendment proposed by Mr. That was passed by Mr. Hines. I move I, vote for that amendment. I second that, Stacy Reed. Hold on, Mr. Morrow. Would you state that again? Yes, sir. I move that we vote for the motion as amended by Mr. Hines. Okay. Mr. Stein, no motions required for that. If we want to go directly to voting, someone could move the previous question, which would require a two thirds vote to end debate, and then we'd move forward. Uh, but if nobody says anything, we would just be ready for a vote at this time. No motion is necessary. Uh, excuse me, I have a question. This is Bob Dietz. Yes, Bob. Um, is this requiring masks? Yes. The part of the mask is still a part of the item number five. All this, the amendment was just to change the dates and to allow the two parent guardians per participant's family. But the mask mandate is, is still in play. So any school district that, uh, the school board would attempt to opt out of wearing masks would not be able to be done. That is, that is my understanding. Mr. Fafflick. That is correct. The mask mandate is a separate item. It is not germane to the restricted attendance. 
uh, that was passed separately uh, by action on November 24th and is not up for debate uh, because it's not been added to the agenda today. So this item is totally about the restricted attendance and the level at which this board is comfortable in moving forward uh, into the, uh, the, next, uh, the next set of contests. Okay, I just re received an uh, email from um, a uh, school board member within my jurisdiction that uh, uh, wanted that clarified. Okay, so we go back to the original motion on item five, which would have been by Mr. Marlin. And I don't remember who seconded that. Mr. Stein, could I have some clarification? As we venture into this final vote, because this is going to be on the vote, yes or no ends the whole discussion of today, correct? There will be no more amendments added to anything because once this vote's taken place, it's over, correct? That is correct. Okay. So what we have, we have a motion on the floor by Mr. Marlin, second by Mr. Graber. We had an amendment by Mr. Hines that we passed for the original motion, is there any further discussion on the original motion with the amendment that we passed by Mr. Hines? Mr. President, Steve I, Harrell, PSCA. Uh, this is a question of privilege. Could we have a reading of the entire motion as amended so we know exactly what we're voting for, please? Yes. The, 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 um, the motion that we are going to vote would be because masks, oh, uh, I'm sorry. From the following, from the Board of Appeals following their December 4th meeting, because masks are already required for attendance of the Kansas State High School Activities Association events, and because the science tells us that proper mask wearing and social distancing effectively mitigates the risk of transmission, transmitting COVID-19 and because we believe that for several reasons, parents should attend their children's activities, we propose that the Keisha Board of Directors be reconvened for the purpose of reconsidering the decision to prohibit spectators at the high school, junior high school event. And effectively Thursday, December the 10th through January the 28th, 2021, interscholastic activities will allow for attendance of up to two parents slash guardians per participant's family as allowed by local board of education or health department restrictions. Thank you. Uh, let me pull the chat up again. I have some comments made. And Alan, we have had a call for the question, which means we need to uh, take action on that unless there are, uh, we need to take action on that call. Okay, so the call for the question would be to vote on this item. Question. I did not write that down. So if you can remind us, please, who made that call for the question. I saw this name pop up, but the chat was over the name. I referenced call for the previous question as part of my reminder that we did not need a, uh, to put a motion before for the group, so I did not officially make that request. I was just explaining uh, what we could do parliamentary procedure-wise. Correct, correct, and I'm asking who asked, who spoke immediately before you, Mr. Hines? Our view was blocked. Mr. Harrell, Mr. Harrell, yeah, what was your question again, Mr. Harrell? Mine was just a question of privilege. I just wanted the entire okay. thing reread, and, and that was taken care of, thank you. Uh, okay. Jeff, is, Jeff is correct, we can vote, but, um, we can discuss some more, and then if somebody actually wants to call a question of privilege or, a, excuse me, call a vote, then it would take another vote to uh, to make that happen. Okay, so 
Mr. Harrell had asked the question to have it read if, uh, for what we are voting on. That's been accomplished. Okay. Any further discussion on the item number five as written and as the amendment, amendment that was passed by Mr. Hines? Mr. Menard? Yeah, I just, um, it, it's not an amendment or anything like that. I just wanted to make sure that we were all good with the verbiage of uh, the two parent guardians versus the change that we discussed earlier that I thought had some positive feedback of two uh, family members per participant's family. Does, was, that a, was that a hold up for anybody or, or what was the uh, reason we didn't go back to that? Everything else from Jeff's proposal looks pretty good. I just didn't know if we have somebody who had a, uh, we have, uh, you, you got to read your demographics of your community. And I think by opening it up to allowing a, a parent to bring a kid because they don't have that daycare, but they're sitting in the stand next to them, not running around. I think that gives them the flexibility to be able to do that. Um, so I don't know, I, I'm not making it a formal amendment at this point, but I just, the discussion of that word, uh, two parent guardians per participant's family versus two family members per participant's family. So uh, I guess discuss that. Okay, um, now it's populating too fast. Anybody else? Uh, Mr. Van Cleef. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm, I'm also, you know, the, the, parent, the parent guardian kind of limits us. I know we talked a little bit about letting coaches bring their, their spouses to the games, but this, this really would not allow for that. Um, administrators, things like that, bringing family members, if we're considered participants. Okay. Um, um, I have Kelly Whitaker. Yeah, I just agree. I think if we look at two family members, I know that I agree with the last comment about how we need to know our demographics and know our community. And if you have two parents that work second or third job, maybe grandma is the one that's able to attend the game. And we've been talking a lot about liability. That's what all the emails from the parent that stated. We're making sure that somebody is there in, in the event of an emergency. And if we limit it to two parents or guardians, I know in our school district, we have a lot of foster care families. I know I've heard the word legal guardian from out there. I just think we're getting we're getting ourselves into a world of it has to be a parent or a guardian. And what would it look like if it said one or two family members per participant? Thank you. Mr. Schaefer. I just think you're opening the door to saying, uh, just give us all two tickets and we'll bring whoever we want. If you open it up to the family, cause then you're going to, who's going to know who and those kind of things. And then you're opening the doors to a lot more people, I think. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, seeing none. We will do a roll call vote for item number five with the amendment that was passed by, that was amended by Mr. Hines and passed by us. Mr. Faflick, if you would proceed with roll call vote. Okay, our final vote then on the amended motion. Uh, we'll go again alphabetically by last name. Abel. No. Baird. Yes. Hocklinger. Yes. Hogs. No. Briggs. Yes. Sorry. Humgarner. No. Burroughs. No. Dollinghouse. Yes. Beats. No. Drumberger. Yes. Flanagan. Yes. Lynn. Yes. Matt Garber. 
Yes. Byron Graper. Yes. Greer. Yes. Griffin. No. Terrell. Yes. Haydock. No. Haynes. Yes. Herman. Yes. Hines. Yes. Over Holdeman. No. Holtzman. Yes. Horst. Yes. Hubbard. Yes. Hutley. Yes. Brad Jones. Yes. Christina Jones. No. Kant. No. Castle. Yes. Kelsch. Abstain. Lane. Yes. Leedy. No. Marlin. Yes. McCabe. Yes. McDiffitt. Yes. McNeese. Like no. They're, they're really going off of, they use that as a guidance, which I, I'm, gl I'm glad we had something to keep. No. On, but that was way back. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. McNeese. Uh, Menard. Yes. Moore. On the yes. On labs or whatever labs are using on that. I wanna, I wanna yes. We're not keeping Morrow. Yes. Nelson. Yes. Obringer Gar Hall. Yes. Perkins. Roger Perkins? No. No, thank you. No. Phillips. Yes. Potts. Yes. Powell. Yes. Presley. Yes. Reed. Yes. Richards. Yes. Richards is a yes via text message. Richardson. No. Robstad. Abstain. Root. Yes. Rosenhagen. No. Shank. Yes. Schneeberger. No. Schroeder. No. Sizer. No. Seifert. No. Schaefer. Yes. Similink. Yes. Simons. Yes. Rod Smith. Yes. Catherine Smith. No. Spoots. Yes. Stein. Yes. Stewart. Epstein. Stonebreaker. No. Rob. Yes, it's like on the bottom. It says something about you. Okay, we have a direct message from Marty. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Strecker. Yes. Sutherland. And Sutherland. Uh, Easy. Voted yes in the yes. chat. Thank you. Drew Tong. Yes. Van Cleve. Yes. Van Reen. Yes. Whitaker. Yes. Wiley. Yes. Wilson. Yes. And Whitmer. Yes. I have staff tabulate. Final motion passes. I'm sorry, final motion yes is our 54. 
21 no's and three abstentions. 21 no's, three abstentions. So the final tally is 54 in favor and 24 no or abstain. Okay. So item number five passes 54 24. Item six, next meeting is regularly scheduled for April 30th, 2021 at 4 p.m. Any further discussion on item six, next meeting? No. Hearing none, seeing none, I would entertain a motion for adjournment. So move. Got a motion to adjourn, a second? Second. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, seeing none. Mr. Fafflick, if you would be, thank you. Please vote at this time. Five, four, three, Two, one. Please close. Ten in favor of those voting, 76 to zero. Probably two in not voting are voting in favor. I would like to thank everyone for taking the time to come back together today uh, to go through this um, very, very thoughtful insight, um, great presentations. Great rationale and uh, the betterment for Kansas kids. Thank you again. Thank you, staff, Mr. Fafflick, for, for helping us through this process today. Everyone have a great rest of your semester. Stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy your break. Hopefully it's coming up soon. Signing off.